Canary Wharf. Isn't it looking Christmassy? And there's somebody else here that's looking <laughs> very Christmassy. Can you tell who it is? Give us a little chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are correct. It is Sci-Finds. And I oh. have a sparkly hat on. Oh, look at that. I love it. <laughs> it does a look right. sparkly hat. It looks brilliant. <laughs> well, we're doing night tires, so, you know, I've got to be illuminated. You hence, have. Hence the, uh, you know very light hat. That's I've, great. I've picked this up myself as well because earlier on we were at the uh, beach and uh, yeah finding sea glass but tonight I need extra light to help me search the foreshore. <laughs> that so is brilliant. Hopefully it looks all right. I haven't tested it so. That's great. Well I'm certainly not going to lose you on the foreshore <laughs> no, tonight exactly. am I? Can you see me fall down this way? <laughs> oh yeah it's perfect. It lights up quite well. I feel like one of those you know those exotic fish deep sea fish that has those light bulbs Yes, the, the angler place. fish. Yeah, I'm not one of those. I think if we um, aim to have at least two objects each, yeah, and something, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything absolutely extraordinary, but just something that we can, um, yeah, find a, get, yeah, get our teeth into. <laughs> exactly. Metaphorically speaking, Brilliant. fantastic. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Such an interesting atmosphere being here at night. In a way, it sort of helps at night. When you've got your head torch on, you sort of have to focus on a relatively small area, and sometimes it's easier to find things when you're doing that. Sometimes things twinkle at you. This marble has been twinkling at me. It's a really nice one, actually, isn't it? Isn't that pretty? That's gorgeous. That's going to make a beautiful fish eye, one of my glass fish. Bits and pieces. Oh, look, what's this? Is that a tag? Oh, I was hoping there might be a number on it or something. Now, I've just seen something down here. Just there. It's a key. Quite a nice little key as well. Isn't that nice? That is a beautiful old key. Maybe Victorian? Georgian? Simon's having a run on musket balls. <laughs> yeah, that's number three. Number three! That's a big one. Oh yeah. And uh, two little ones. Wow, lots of musket balls. Mm. I've just uh, leveraged out part of uh, the, well, the, the skull, it would seem, of a, a large animal, probably a very large cow. Look, you can just see the beginning of the horn there. See it? Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's probably another bone, or is it a stone? You get stones that masquerade as very, very interesting objects. Crafty little things they are. I'm having a really good scrape around here. There's lots and lots of exposed mud, and it's exactly the sort of place where bits of metal get caught as they're on their way down to the river. And I've seen something over there under this brick. Can you see what I'm looking at? I'm really excited to pick it up and see what it is. It 
could be some kind of brooch or something. Or it could be that we're going to be vastly disappointed. It's just here, look. Now, what is it? Is it going to be anything? I really hope so. Whatever it is, it's the back of something. And do you know what? From there, yeah, you can see that it's, um, or it was a brooch, can't you? As you can see where the pin was. It looks like Scooby-Doo. Or a, a little dog. Okay, it's the big reveal. What's it going to be? Oh, <laughs> it's a little dog. How funny is that? It's like a Scotty dog. It's a little Scotty dog. Oh, wow. That is so cool. That is so cool. <laughs> what a... Random little brooch. What a random little brooch. Isn't it great? That's rather perfect. I can't wait to show Simon. Yeah, you can see where it's had um, all the detail of the fur etched into the metal. Cute. There are so many tiny little pieces of metal. I know I keep going on about tiny bits of metal, but I do love them. But there are so many tiny bits here, but I've actually just seen one that's rather special. I don't know if you can see it there. Um, it is, oh there it is. Now it's just here. Now can you make out a little face? Can you make out a little face? Just behind that pebble. It's just here. It's the tiniest little head. Now usually I find all the bodies, but on this occasion I've actually found a head and it's either a soldier with a helmet on or an old lady with a hat. I don't know but I've got lots of headless lead soldiers at home and so I'm sure I can find one that this head might fit. So that's perfect, but look at that, tiny perfect little head. Where's your body? Where's your body? Where's your body, little head? I want to make sure I put that little head in a safe place. Oh, look. <laughs> there is a... Um, that looks like a foot. That looks like a foot. A big foot, actually. It's either a foot or a head of an animal. Put that in there for further investigation. I like collecting all this metal because, honestly, one of these days I'm going to make a really big picture with them all and it's going to look really good. I can see it in my mind's eye and that's always a good start. Now this is when I have to be careful because you can hear the boats. Oh look, that's nice. That would have probably come off of a watch chain. You can hear the boats and in a minute the wash is going to come up here and uh, if you're not careful you can get absolutely soaked. Ooh, it's creeping up already, it nearly caught me out. Here it comes. How are you? I'm getting lonely out here. Oh, sorry. I thought I'd come and see how you were doing. I'm having a nice time. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a nice time. I found two heads. Two heads? Yeah. Oh, God, hopefully not human. No, well, one of them is, but it's a lead human, so. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, I found um, two little heads. 
yeah. a dog head and a person head. It's really cute. Oh, wow, that's good. Yeah, like that. look, I'll show you. Yeah. I saw it when it was like that, okay? Oh, yeah. And I thought it was Scooby Doo. And then turned it over. Oh, a little Westie. <laughs> yeah, oh, is it a Westie? Yeah. I thought it was a squatty dog. Oh. But, might, yeah. Might be right. No, well, you're probably right, actually. And then the tiniest ever little lead soldier head. Am I blinding you? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? I found a little lead traders token, really nice oh, one. Oh really? Yeah, really beautiful. Really Lovely. Happy with that. Yeah, do I have a look? Yeah, I would. Am I blinding you with my if you could shine it down here? Yeah, sorry. That's the trouble yeah. with headlamps, isn't it? You go around blinding people. Shine it there a bit. Okay. So I can see what I'm I took the hat off because it dropped off, but you could actually wear it again now if you want. That's right. Wow. I'm not gonna, there it is. A token. Yeah, it's really cool, look. Oh. Oh, nice. It's got yeah. initials on it. Whether it comes out or not. MWS or R, MWR, I think. Oh, and then on the other side, it's double, double sided, look. <gasps> nice. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, a little chevron kind of design. Oh, it's beautiful. It's kind of medieval, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, we've done pretty well. We've, you know, I said we both had fine, like, two cool things we've already done that haven't yeah, we because exactly. you found musket balls traders token mm. oh whatever it is yeah it's traders token lead traders token yeah no i'm well happy with that um yeah so keep on looking i think it's still more to be found yeah I'm brilliant done. so yeah okay. it's really fantastic <laughs> Just spotted something over here, just lying on the surface. Can you see it? Just there, look. Just, just there. It's a little ink pot. It's a little bit broken. Victorian ink pot. Simon has just found a lot of bottles, interesting bottles made of, well, I think they might be, I think they might be wood painted. They could be plastic, I'm not sure, but they are like messages on bottles. And oh my gosh, this one's brilliant. This one's brilliant. This one is perfect. Oh, <laughs> this is really funny. Okay, so on this side, it says, ignore this sign. And then on the other side, it says, live the dream. Live the dream. Well, that's a good message, isn't it? For, for Christmas and the, the coming year. Live your dream. Now the other ones that Simon found, or at least a couple of them, is this one here, which actually doesn't have a message on it, but this one, which does have a message. And again, it's a very good message for us all. Do things that make you feel excited. Fancy that. You come down to the river looking for treasures and you find lots of good advice. Do things that make you feel excited. I can see another one here, look. Look at this one. Okay, this one says no. It says no on that side. What's it going to say on the other side? I do, I do, I do. I want to see them. I want to see them all. Look. Oh my gosh, you've got loads. <laughs> pick a card, any card. Okay, let me let me pick one. Let me pick one. Okay, I'm going to go for the red one. What's that one say? Okay, a non. Buy a non, and on the other side it says nothing. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Go for the orange one. Okay, I'm going to go. For the, I'm going to go for the orange one. I'm going to go for this orange one. Come on in. Da, da, da. Can I make a difference? Said 7.6 billion people. Being vegan, per day you save a thousand gallons of water, 45 pounds of grain on animals' life, 20 pounds of CO2, and 3,000 and 
80 feet of forest. Well, there is a thought. There's a thought. Something to contemplate. Uh, I'll save you the time. The, the, other, the other interesting one is this dude. Is he the leader of the... Uh... Oh, now that is... Um, that is Bob and Roberta. Roberta and Bob Smith. Ah. Oh. There is still art. There is still hope. Yeah, he's Bob and Roberta Smith. He's a fairly um, famous artist. I wonder if he made them. Maybe What's that one? I like that as oh, well. They, these might be ones I found earlier. I don't know. I've sort of put them all together. Gosh. Now. That was the one oh, I found earlier. It? The last thing I was expecting to find. I know. Messages on bottles. How bizarre. Nice find, Si. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Strangest things you find on the Thames foreshore, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, it surely is. It's another do things that make you feel excited one. So that means that you can have one too. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you are. Oh, actually, it's kind of nicer than yours because there's a really interesting print on the other side. Yeah, yeah, it is nice, isn't it? I noticed <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. So what makes you excited then, Simon? What makes Bad you excited? Yeah. Finding history, learning all about it. And it's not just history, it's, uh, you know, it's zeitgeist stuff as well, so, you know, things of the times. Mm. You know, this is all quite interesting stuff, whether yeah. you think it's... I mean, you don't agree with it or not, then that's that's fine. But at least there are some positive messages on here. They're, they're trying to do the right thing. Um, so, yeah. It's, well, it's uh, like guerrilla art, isn't it? Exactly. It's, uh, yeah. This is art, and it's art on the banks of the Thames. I know. It's fantastic. Cool. Well, this is making me thirsty looking at this bottle next. So <laughs> okay, let's go, let's go. Maybe go and have a little drink. <laughs> I think we should, and a mince pie and some clotted cream. Let's do it. We're going back to the studio and we're going to enjoy some festive food, maybe a bit of mulled wine and some mince pies. And Simon is going to tell me all about some of his top finds, and some of these you may not have heard about. So let's get on it, and I suppose I'm going to have to give him his hat back now. Oh, that's my lucky hat, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> here in the warm now and we have got some mince pies and clotted cream and it's very good and I even have a little bit of mulled wine. Have you got a mulled wine or a mulled beer? Well I've got a beer. You've got yeah. beer. So, um, cheers. Beer. Great little outing mm. and also a good outing when we were searching for sea glass. Lots of Christmassy outings. Oh yeah. But anyway let's get down to business and I would love it if you would tell me about your top five finds from 2021. Simon has found some amazing things, so I don't know how he's going to choose <laughs> which ones are his top five. Mm, with pleasure. Yeah, there's so much to choose from. I had a really good year, loved every minute of it, a lot of hours spent on the foreshore, and some good things come up. So I could start right away with probably the earliest find, mm -hmm. and that is my mammoth tooth. Mammoth tooth. I mean, that's crazy. Mm, it is. It's, it's between something like 15,000 years old and it could be up to a million. And it's a juvenile tooth, so of a young calf elephant. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Again, when I found it, I didn't know what it was. It 
to, to begin with, but I've seen other people find them. So there's some telltale signs that would tell me exactly what it was. So again, showed it for your friends and got an idea that there's a mammoth tooth. So it's absolutely amazing to think that's lying there for at least 15,000 years, maybe even longer, and then just shows up one day. And luckily I spotted it because it could have easily been mistaken for just a piece of another piece of rubble because there's so much rubble down there. So very lucky to spot that. So yeah, one of my top finds. That's incredible. Have you recorded that with the museum? Not yet. No, I will do. Yeah, they, they've got, they're doing some other finds of mine. Mm -hmm. um, one of my other favourite finds they're actually, actually recording. So I didn't want to give them too much. No. <laughs> so uh, this is on the list to go the next time I see the flow, which is the finds liaison officer. And myself and Nick, we, we record any finds that are older than 300 years old. So it can be recorded on the Portable Antiquity Scheme database. And therefore other generations down the line, other people, academics, whoever, um, people interested in anything that is found can, uh, can do some research and find more about these artefacts. I mean, to think that it's a tooth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bigger than my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having toothache with that. I know, it's mad. It's really cool. But um, yeah, so that's the first one. Um, again, in no particular order really, but um, something completely different mm -hmm. is probably my hand grenade. Now, I know these are relatively common finds for certain detectorists and especially magnet wow. fishers, they find quite a lot. And I know you found one. Uh, this one is actually, it's, it was probably emptied before it got dropped. So it might have been used as a train round, but it's definitely, probably, well, most likely from the war, well, oh. Second World War. But it was quite exciting because we had to find the police, as you do when you find live ordnance, or think you found live ordnance. Um, and we had a good laugh with them because they didn't have any willies or anything, and they weren't prepared for the mud. So they were falling over themselves trying to get down there and, and help us uh, work out exactly what this was. Turned out that it was hollow, so there was no need to do a controlled explosion. The bomb squad followed the police, so there was a, a, a long line of people that had to come and have a look. <clears throat> However, the guy, the guy that actually decided that it wasn't live and of no harm, let me keep it. So thank goodness he hasn't been blown up into smithereens because I wouldn't be holding it here now. So. Yeah, I'm chuffed a bit with finding a, a hand grenade that I can actually keep and not one that they've decided to explode. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's chuffed that's a great. That. That, is, that is a great find. I found one of those and the Ordnance Squad did come and do a controlled explosion. Go ahead, Marine, sir. This is where you confirm the river is fully closed now. Yeah, just keep my people to receive that. Yeah, that was received. Fight! Fight! Told you. Bloody hell! <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> You're off. But there's so much um, related to the war mm. to be found along the Thames, isn't there? And there's still things like that washing up. Uh, yeah, I did find one that they did actually do a controlled explosion. So uh, again. <laughs> Check out the YouTube videos because that was such a fun day. We found one in a different creek. They actually shut the whole road off uh, for that for that one. So yeah, they're, they're always good fun when they come up. So that was number two. Um, and third one is going to be, we talked about small finds earlier and things that were recorded with the museum. And my third find of 2021 is my intaglio, my little tiny intaglio. So I actually found two intaglios. Um, last year, they're so tiny. I'm, I'm surprised, you know, I'm surprised it's just one. But I'm so lucky to have both. Um, and one I think is Apollo seated, um, which is quite unique. It could be Roman, it could be Georgian, but it's being recorded at the museum. So when we find out, I'll post it on my community page, hopefully with the results. Now with these intaglios, they're they're pieces of glass that have been hand etched, hand engraved, obviously in reverse, so they can create a print. Um, usually when they're sealing wax seals for letters or documents and that sort of thing so that people know that when they receive said document that it is signed by the person that is, that is genuine, it's a genuine seal. And these can be sometimes in rings or sometimes in a, a, a fob seal. So um, two of those have been recorded and the second one that I found is a Jesus on the cross and he was with me that time when I found that. Mm. So absolutely remarkable finds but again both of them being recorded but You'll see pictures come up now and you can see for yourself the detail. It must have taken incredible skill to make something so tiny and also you're thinking in reverse. So when you print it, it's got to be flipped yeah. the right way around. Okay, so find number four 
Um, I'm going to go with my suffragette badge. And this was a, a, a stunning little find. It's a little badge, and um, as you know, the, uh, the the votes for women um, was around in the, kind of like the 1920s. They were trying to really push, uh, you know, the rights of women back then, mm. and so they did things a bit like things we found today with the uh, Extinction Rebellion. They were trying really crazy things to get attention and it meant they go on marches to, to parliament and often getting in, in scrapes with the police and the general public because there's still a lot of you know um, animosity towards the idea of letting women have the vote um, so this little badge here represents one era or one segment of the, of the, of the society um, and it's absolutely incredible to think this was probably on a suffragette marching through London. Yeah, that really is. You know, and really, really pushing the vote for women, which, you know, is actually an amazing piece of social history. To think that would be worn with pride, you know, mm. trying to start a revolution, it's just incredible. So, yeah, really chuffed with that. Yeah, and it's fascinating to think who wore that badge. Mm. And how they lost it as well. They had a bit yeah. of a tussle and it <laughs> flung off when they were getting into their, you know, their, their arguments with the, with the public. Or, um, yeah, maybe it just broke off and fell off uh, naturally, mm. who knows? But a lot of these, uh, we never really know the true reason why a lot of these things are lost. This is why we love mud -like and How did it end up there and who did it belong to? Each artifact tells a wonderful story. Yeah, it does. It gets your imagination going. That's for sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, my top find of 2021 has to be, and again, Dick was with me that day when I found my complete Roman pot. I obviously... Bring you luck. You do, yeah. <laughs> Should go out more often. Bring him luck, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely go out more often, I think. Um, but yeah, as you can see from the footage, it was a really, you can see the emotion on my face. We spent a lot of time trying to find various locations where we think there might be a bit of Roman activity. A lot of places we thought there was and there wasn't, and a lot of places we didn't have any idea there would be stuff there and there was. So it was incredible to put my hands in the mud, having mm -hmm. only seen like a quarter of it. It looked like a little tortoise sitting in the mud, but we'd found a few shards previously, so you kind of tune your eyes into what the sort of things you're gonna expect to find. And then just putting my hands in the mud and pulling out that complete Roman pot was a once in a lifetime opportunity and definitely the highlight of 2021. Simon, how do you feel? How do you feel? On top of the world. Absolutely stunned and amazed and, well, what can I say? It's uh, very few times in our lives we get to find stuff like this. We did it 10 years or so. And so yeah, it's, it's the epitome of mudlarking for me. So that pot um, was actually probably um, a wine beaker and it's black burnish ware and it's about the second century. So 1800, 1850, you know, 850 years old, sitting in the mud. And it's that soft mud that has preserved it. So when I say I'm a mud lover, it's not because I've got some weird you know, <laughs> thing with the mud, it's because they do such a great job of preserving all these wonderful finds yeah, for us to, to, to find in the future. So that's it, Nick. that's my top five finds from 2021. Well, what an absolutely amazing selection. And to think they span from thousands and thousands mm. of years ago um, up to the most modern one, which is going to be the, the grenade, I suppose. Or mm. the the suffragette badge, mm. but there's just such a huge, diverse, varied mix of objects on the Thames, which, which is what keeps us going back, really, isn't it? It is, yeah. Because really, you never know what you're going to find. You don't, and that's why we're so lucky in this country to have that long history, mm. and the Thames being such a popular route into London. You know, that's that's how London became to be because the Thames was such a, you know, a highway for for tra transport for for traffic for you know, um, imports and exports, and that's what's given us the, the bounty that we get to find today. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Well, I know that you also sometimes like searching for bottles. Mm, I do. And as it's Christmas, I do have a little gift for you. Oh. Which is here. Lucky me. And so I present to you with this Christmas gift, which we may now unwrap. Oh, thank you very much. Some of you may have seen what it is, so hopefully he hasn't got this already. Oh wow. Hopefully. Oh, look at that! The book of bottle collecting by Doreen Beck. 
Have fantastic. You got, have you got that book? No, I don't. No, that's fantastic. Thank you very oh, much. There you go. It might help with some oh, of yeah. the research on your. No, books. that's absolutely priceless. Yeah, I mean the internet is good, but it's always it's all full of other people's yeah. thoughts and opinions. So sometimes you can get mislaid into what actual things are, but when it's in a book, you know that it's fact generally because it's been proofread about a thousand times. So thank you very much, Nick. Oh, well, my great pleasure. I'm delighted that you don't have it. No, I don't. Well, I've got you a present too. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> I haven't yet seen a boy. And look, I wonder what it could be. Now look, Ooh. I'm into my upcycling, right? So I had to use a piece of newspaper to wrap up Nick's present, but it's a Sudoku page, so at least you can use the newspaper again <laughs> to do some puzzles. <laughs> Actually, it's very effective. I've never thought about wrapping presents in newspaper. Oh, yeah, see, you can save the planet and also enjoy the unwrapping process as well. Ooh, look, look, look. Do you love unwrapping a good present? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this! London's Strangest Tales. The Thames, extraordinary but true stories. That's a good book as well. <laughs> look at that. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. It's good when you can't get to sleep after a long day's mud life and you can sit there and read that. And have you read it? I have, yeah. It's good. Very good. It's all short stories. So it's like, you know, they just a couple of pages for each, each remarkable tale. So I hope you enjoy it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, what a fantastic array of finds. And it's uh, such a privilege to hear all about them. It's and who knows what 2022 has got in store. I can't wait. More mudlark, you bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just when you think you found something that you can't possibly get more excited about, you find something else, don't know. you? Yeah, you never know what's going to be next, do you? Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it certainly is an exciting hobby and a, a living that dream, a bit like those bottles which we found <laughs> on the floor. That's what gets me excited. Today. Yeah, no, I'm me too. <laughs> but um, now I wanted to tell you all about the giveaway which I'm going to do. This is my Christmas giveaway and this has been made possible by Rec Diver, who that's his YouTube name. Um, so thank you very much Rep Diver for this. So this glass fish is going to be with one of you, hopefully, in a little while. And so to win this glass fish, which is made out of glass collected along the Thames and the Thames estuary, and this one in particular is made with a lot of glass from Victorian poison bottles. So if you'd like to win this glass fish, then I'm going to ask you to put a comment down in the comments. And, oh, I don't know, I hadn't thought about the hashtag actually, Simon. Can you think of something that people should put? What about, I like to use the word shared, hashtag shared, because that way um, you can help by sharing the video on any social media platform, oh, or just telling a friend. Good idea. And then once you've done so, we're not going to check that you've done it, but <laughs> just be, you know, gracious and maybe share with a friend and neighbour, tell your dog and then put hashtag shared after you've done it. That way other people get to enjoy the videos hopefully and that's a good word to, to put in the, the comments and then pick a winner from that. Okay, no, that's a great idea. So yeah, please do share this video and then in the comments put hashtag shared and then in a couple of weeks time we will find out which one of you has won this Thames glass fish. So good luck everyone, and uh, soon this fish could be hanging on your wall. And it's a lot of history in here. Every little piece of glass has its own secret history. So good luck, and thank you again, Rec Diver. I'm going to enter, by the way, so hopefully I'll win. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to share Imagine if he does win, it's going to look like such a face, isn't it? <laughs> I'll, I'll put it back in the raffle like they do sometimes, you know. Well, as it's Christmas, the fun doesn't end here and there are even more amazing finds to discover. And recently, Simon interviewed me about some of my top finds and he is putting his video out at exactly the same time today, Christmas Day. Well, it's not Christmas Day today when we're doing this, <laughs> but on the day that you're watching it, it's Christmas Day. And so do go over now to watch Simon's video to discover more Incredible artefacts discovered in the Thames mud. The link is in the description below. <laughs> the thumbnail is yes, here. I forgot that bit. <laughs> Simon did tell me to say that, but I forgot. So yes, the link is in the description below or in the thumbnail here. 
So do go over and watch it. And if you don't already subscribe to Simon's channel, I highly advise you to do so because it can only enrich your life. And there's more Nick in it, so come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what a lot of fantastic finds and who knows what we're going to find next year. That is something to look forward to, isn't it? That's it. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. I'm sure there'll be lots of wonderful finds coming up in 2022. I should think so. And in the meantime, have an absolutely brilliant Christmas and we will see you in the new year. Happy New Year, guys. Merry Christmas. That time of year has come around again Good on some but hard on others Be kind and take care of each other Not everyone has got a friend tonight Time of buying everything inside In the scurry of the lovers holding hands You're lucky if you have a friend tonight While the ghost of Christmas present is in every tender Too many still apart Since the ghost of Christmas coming Is for none of us unsure For the ghost of Christmas present We open up our door Fantastic! I love it. How are you going to get that home? <laughs> well, that is a good question, but you've got a big backpack on, so yeah. I thought that that was your job. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Christmas, everybody! <laughs> I'll stuff it in my sack. <laughs> Squibble! Do you want to wish everybody a happy Christmas? Shall we wish everyone a very happy Christmas? I tell you what, as it's Christmas, would you like a grape? Let's try him with a little grape. Apparently squirrels like grapes. Let's see if he likes a grape. A Christmas grape. Would you like a grape? Would that be nice? Would that make a change? Would it? Come on then, let's have a go. Let's see if you like a grape. Oh, let's have a look, see if you like, oh. Oh, yummy, yummy. Oh yes. Happy Christmas squirrel, look at that. Oh, he's liking that. Oh, I can, I can hear him munching it up. <laughs> it's got to make a change from a nut, isn't it? Happy Christmas from me and happy Christmas from Squirrel. Know what you're after? Another nut. Oh my goodness! I'm a slave to this squirrel. Believe me, I'm, I'm an actual slave. I am but your humble servant, Mr. Squirrel. I'm supposed to be making a video.